Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. Throughout Big Idea 1, Creative Development, we're going to create an amazing Animal Park app. Today we will begin by starting with animal sounds. So let's actually look at this app. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my emulator. Something you'll notice is this is in English, but it actually said it in Spanish. So actually, let's see how that worked. If I click on text-to-speech, I have the language in Spanish. I'm going to change it to English. So, today we're going to work with hearing animal sounds. So let's see what that looks like. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. So again, I have it here in English, but if I change the language to Spanish, it will convert it for me. Let's go ahead and change it back to English. Touch the animal pictures below to hear their sounds. And you can see I have a bunch of animals here. I can touch any of these animals. or I can press all. So, let's get started. In the previous video, we designed our home screen, screen one. We obviously need to make another screen called animal sounds that we're gonna click, but let's go ahead and begin coding our screen one. So what do we want on our screen one? What are we gonna to have to code on our screen one? First, let's code something interactive. So when someone clicks on our picture, we're gonna say, welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park, which we already have here. We're also gonna program our background music, and we also need to program this button. When someone clicks it, it takes us somewhere. You can see right now, if I click this, it does nothing. If I click this, it does nothing. So let's actually program. So we're gonna go, remember programming, you go to blocks. And let's just do the quick and easy, when someone clicks our picture, we're gonna say, ouch, welcome to Jamie's Animal Park. So let's see, let's click on image. Remember these are the programming blocks that we're gonna use. I'm gonna pull out image selfie dot click. And the only thing I wanna do is I wanna speak. So I'm gonna come over here to text to speech. Here's my block I want is speak and remember you have to put text inside of here so I'm going to click on text pull this in and let's just put ouch right now and then we'll say welcome to Jamie's amazing animal park so let's test this let's see if it works when I click this does it say that ouch welcome to Jamie's amazing animal park so even though I have it in English, let's play with this and change the language. So I'm gonna change the language to Spanish. Let's change it to French. Let's change it to Italian. So again, you can play with this. I'm gonna change it back to English. And you can also play with pitch. I'm going to make it 2.0. Ouch. Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park. So, 0 0.5. Ouch. Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park. So that was slowing it down. Let's speed it up. 1.2.0. Ouch. Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park. So again, you have options. Anytime you have properties, you can play with them. I'm going to change this back to 1.0. So we have that. Now we need to program our background music. When our app launches, we want it to start playing this background music. So we need to go to our screen, screen one. Remember these are the event blocks in brown. The event I'm looking for is when the screen starts. 
that is this initialize and also remember if you mouse over a block it will show you this hint to tell you what this block does so over initialize you can see it says initialize event is run when this screen starts and only run once per screen so i want to pull that out and all i want to do is play our background music i'm also going to let's see i want to speak so let's let's say this message right here welcome to jamie's amazing animal park now I type that here inside of label, so I don't have to retype it again. I actually can get this property. So let's speak, but we're gonna pull the text from whatever is inside of here so you can learn how to use property blocks. So let's go to blocks. I'm gonna text-to-speech, I need that. I'm gonna use the events or procedure block for text-to-speech called speak. Now I wanna get the text that is inside of label user info. Remember laser user info is this right here. Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park. I don't wanna to have to retype this up here or type in, I could type in a message, but why do that if I just wanna say this? I've already typed that out. So I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna click on label. Label, you can see there, these are all the properties. You can see background color, font size, HTML content has margins. If I go back to designer, you can see background color, font bold, font size, HTML format has margins. So these properties in MIT App Inventor can be accessed by clicking on blocks and selecting the green blocks. I want you to notice there's two colored blocks. There is a light green block and then there is a dark green block. So the light green block, let's scroll down to the one we want. We want text. So you can see here, there is a light green block here. I'm gonna pull that out. And I'm gonna click back over here. And here's a dark green block for text, label user info. So you can see here's the light green block, here's a dark green block. What is the difference? The light green blocks are if I want to get whatever the property is. So currently, label user info is welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park. If I wanted to change that, I could use this block, but let's, you can see, I want to simply speak this message so I can place this inside of here. Now when the screen initializes, it will start playing the background music and say this. Let's try that. So to initialize the screen, we can go back and simply change the property. So let's make this italics as well. Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park app. So you can see, here, it's playing the background music, it started it, and then it said, Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park app. It's getting the text from this. Well, let's see how I can change it. I can actually change that text by doing set, and let's say, Welcome to Jamie Gant's Amazing Animal Park app. So here I have Welcome to Jamie's. I'm gonna add my last name. I'm gonna change it. So let's see what happens. And I just need to simply change property to refresh my screen, or I can do refresh companion screen. Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park app. So look at what's happening here. On the left, I have Welcome to Jamie's Amazing Animal Park. Over here, it has Welcome to Jamie Gant's Amazing Animal Park. Why is that happening? When I'm starting my screen, I'm playing the background music, I'm changing the label to say Jamie Gant's Amazing Animal Park, and then I'm speaking whatever is inside of that label. So that's the difference between set and get. Remember, we always want to comment our code, right click and click comment, I'm gonna pull this out. And what are we doing in this? One, we are playing the background music. And then two, we are updating the label text property with our last name. And three, we're speaking to the user with the text from our label. So there we go. And up here, I'll just simply add a quick comment. User touched our picture, so say, ouch, and welcome to our app. And the last thing we need to program on this screen for now is to hear the animal sounds button. When I click it, nothing happens. So let's go ahead and program that. On the left side, BTN animal sounds, click on that. Again, we have 
the brown event blocks. These are events that happen. Got focus, long click, lost focus, touch down, touch up. I'm going to simply pull out the clicked block. And what do we want to do here? I'm going to right click to add comments. For this, we want to, let's say one, we're going to speak to the user. And then two, we're going to go to the animal sounds screen. Okay, so let's try that. So the first thing we want to speak to the user. Anytime we want to speak to the user, we're going to use text-to-speech. So I'm going to click on text-to-speech, pull this in. And what do we want to say here? Let's say we want, we're going to pull, click on text. Let's pull in our text block. And let's say, let's hear some amazing animal sounds. That works. And what we want to do is go to another screen. So remember to go to another screen. I'm going to click on control. I'm going to scroll down and you're going to see two versions of open another screen. This is if you just want to simply go to the screen. This is if you want to go to the screen and pass a value. For example, if you finish a game and you want to go to a high score screen, you can pass the user's high score to that screen and then see if they are placed on the high screen score. But for now, we just simply want this screen. So I'm going to come here and now we're going to click on text and we're going to pull in this. Now the screen we want to go to, let's go ahead and just call it animal sounds. So we are done, but we should always test it. I know there is an error in our app right now. We've coded everything, but there's still an error. So let's see what that error is. Let's think about it first. We're saying it's, this is going to speak, which is fine. But now we're saying go to the animal sound screen. Well, did we create the animal sound screen? If we didn't create the animal sound screen, how can we go to it? Hmm. So let's test it out and see what happens. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. So you can see here it it speaks, but then now we got a runtime error. It says invalid screen animal sounds it means we do not have an animal sound screen. We need to make one. So I always select the text, right click and copy because spelling does matter. So I simply copy that and I'm going to click add a screen. Paste that in there and click OK. Now it looks like everything was erased, but no, we're on a new screen called animal sounds. If I click back here and go back to screen one. Welcome to Jamie against the amazing animal power camp. So now what I can do, if I click on this, because we actually created that, it should take us to our animal sounds. Let's see. Let's hear some amazing animal sounds. And you can see it takes us to our animal sounds page. With that, we are done with our screen one. In the next video, we're both going to design and code our animal sounds screen.